I just have one thing to say Is if you leave me, will I still feel the same When all I want to hear is I'm George, I'm the bassist My name's Owen, and I'm the singer and guitarist I'm Damon, I'm the drummer I'm Patrick, and I play guitar I'm Alex, and I play guitar and the band is called Kill Up Charlie, because no one said that. Yeah, I thought, I was, I thought we were going to do that. I'm here, Kill Up Charlie! <laughs> oh, what do It was born out of watching loads of cool musicians from a younger play. Oh, we can definitely do that now. Um, and, uh, well, I'll let Alex take it away for the name anyway, where we got the name. But, uh, well, we originally started playing me, George, and our old drummer. We started playing like a shed, the three of us together. And then we got, we're just doing Green Day covers. We got Patrick in. We did our first gig without a singer, um, which was crazy. We were, what, 14? Green Day covers with Green no Day singer. Covers, no singer. It was a spectacle. Well, we got, well, we got the sixth member of the band. Oh, yes, 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 we did, yes, 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 we did. And yeah, we just kind of went from there. We, we got the name from a Spider-Man comic, Kim and Charlie. Great name. We love it. <laughs> we love it. Was it not originally Kill him Cardi and I read it wrong? Was it not another name before that as well that was, oh, was right, vetoed? Yeah. We were called the Detours. Let's get the whole history in. <laughs> the whole history. Yeah, no stone history. unturned. No stone unturned. And then we got Owen in and that's when we started writing good songs. And then we got Damon in and that's... Started when, writing great songs. Great. <laughs> um, that's, when, that's when we really became I think the Killing Charity that we started to 100% enjoy and actually really care about the music. Not that we didn't before, but it's just, it's been great since the five of us came together. It's, it's really the, the gel that we needed. Lad Rock. Lad Rock. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, recently, someone, uh, a blogger, was at our last gig there, which was two days ago, and they wrote a good piece on us. Does anyone remember what they were called? You want to give them a shout Jack out? Jack Music. Jack Music from Cork. Uh, Jack, Jack, Jack Music yeah. Media. Music That's Media from Cork, and uh, they described us as Lad Rock, which uh, I've never heard before, but uh, it's a really good. I really like it. <laughs> so, uh, it kind of sums it up, really. It does hit the nail on the head a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I suppose somewhat between pop punk and indie rock. And, uh, and there's a bit of post punk in there as well. Yeah, to be some fair. heavier so. tones every now and again as well. So yeah. I think that's it's hard to describe. It's always a tough question. But I think the easy answer yeah. would be that like it's rock music. We're a rock <laughs> band. <laughs> Soft spot for I'm Not Alone, um, but at the moment um, we have a new EP coming out next year and it's just done. We finished recording it. There's a song on it at the moment called Sunday's Unwell, and I just love playing that song at the moment. I think the lyrics are fantastic, just the whole vibe of the song. I'm, 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 I'm just yeah. loving that at the moment, so I'm gonna say that one. I have to be a loser and say that's also my favorite. <laughs> that's such a cop out. That's <laughs> such a cop out. Man. Patrick's the quiet one. Are shit. <laughs> Very evidently. <laughs> What's your second favorite? <laughs> What's the song before that one? <laughs> Logan I wrote is quite good as well. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that's good. Uh, for me, it'd be another song off the new EP. Uh, we have a song called Daydreaming. Um, it'll actually be the final track on the new EP, and it's quite different to the stuff that we've done before. I think it's a lot, it's a bit slower and it's a bit heavier lyrically in a way. Um, but I think it's it's a really solid song. I think what's exciting about it is that it kind of shows that we have we have more areas to go into that we haven't gone into yet. So that's what it might be. That's a solid answer, <laughs> Jesus. There you go, Pat. That's how you do it. Um, the workout to a minimum. <laughs> I find it hard to pick a favourite song because as a singer, anyone who like hears their own voice back, it's a bit of a strain, so I don't listen to maybe the songs back as much as the rest of the lads. But uh, I always have a soft spot for When You Need Me. It was like our first uh, first single, and I think it was the first song I wrote all by myself that I was like, yeah, that's good uh, in any way. So I was like, um, and w when we were in college as well, we w uh, won a battle of the bands, and um, the prize for that was to record a single in like a very good, uh, well-renowned studio in Cork. So as well, 
we also have a really, really good recording of it. So like, if anyone wants to listen to it, uh, it always sounds like super clean. So it's easy, easy to show off. Jeez, oh, I almost forgot about that song. We have to bring it back. Uh, favorite song? It's hard to pick a favorite, to be honest. Like, I'm a, a big fan of of our tunes, but I'd have to say. Yeah, just because for us playing in this, well, I think the newer stuff is always going to be more exciting because it's fresher. So, like, I, a lot, we played a lot of sport growing up as well. Which kind of, for some reason, kind of music and sport don't really go together. Not in this because, country. No, 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 not in this country. Um, so like, I played sport from till I, from when I was like four to eighteen, and I always say to people like, you get a buzz from that, definitely, but there is nothing like being on stage, mm -hmm. like playing music in front of people. Like as soon as we started doing that, I was just like, oh yeah, no, I'd much prefer to dedicate my time to this than sport but um it was just incredible it's very very addicting as well it goes too quick but also quick enough as well yeah like you'd spend you'd spend weeks practicing for a gig and practicing the songs over and over again you think you write 12 15 songs the, what was the most amount of songs we played before is it 17 or <laughs> 18, 18 or 19 yeah. but that goes it feels like five minutes has passed and you're halfway through the set already um, so it's 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 a it's a moment you want to hold on to for a very long time, but it does fly. Um, before our first time, before our first gig, was so nerve wracking. I don't know how old we were, fifteen, fourteen, fourteen or fifteen. It was so so scary. This is like when we were playing the Green Day covers with no singer, um, and we had like the small little theatre down where we used to live, where we're all from, and uh, I don't know how what the capacity is, like forty people or something like that. Um, but it's all like our close friends and family have come down to see us and low-key just to kind of see if we were any good um because we're like we yeah, you know we're, we know we're in a band now lads just let you know and they're like all right we'll come see you it's like oh jesus they're actually coming to see us oh my god um but uh yeah once you're on there it's fine i always still get a bit nervous before going on stage i think the biggest change because i wasn't in the band obviously when the lads started but my first gig in the band um <laughs> i was so nervous that my dad pointed out to me afterwards, he was like, you didn't look up the entire time. Because <laughs> I was terrified. So um, yeah, I think that's the biggest change that I've noticed, like compared to the gig we did a few days ago, is that like the very first time, like it was great. But my God, was it scary. <laughs> yeah. You feel very exposed <laughs> the first couple of times. The great thing about being able to drink is you're much more comfortable <laughs> on stage. That is very true. I've noticed that it was the Whelan's gig when I didn't drink. And I was like a little. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, we were saying. We were saying to you afterwards. It was literally like I, I could hear everything perfectly for the first time, completely sober. It's um, not though, because I didn't drink at the Fred's gig. I was like, usually I kind of can't remember playing mm. much. You know, it kind of goes by in a blur. But sober as well, that still happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's it. It's I so, just can't remember. It's so playing. hard to remember like the full set. You might remember little moments, but like yeah, sometimes so we finish. I was like, did we play that song? So always the bits in between songs I remember. It's like Owen. Yeah, it's Owen yeah, is Owen such a good. Owen's a great, great frontman. Unbelievable so frontman. Keeping the crowd. So man, dog shite. That's me, by the way, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. In fairness, uh, the last gig we did, I did get a lot of compliments uh, on my between song. Uh, rubbish talk, I'd say. Repartee. Yeah, I don't know. Fair enough. <laughs> That's a bit of rubbish talk now. But, uh, but uh, yeah, no, it's surprising because uh, for myself, when you get up, um, you're just kind of. Uh, trying to fill the void between songs and you don't really notice if it's good or bad or like as long as there's no awkward lull and then uh, so it's always weird when someone's like geez you're very funny up there or like Joe someone asked me did I practice between them and I was like no <laughs> I was like, that's a bit mad like but obviously some people probably find that a bit harder than others so I know that's a cool cool uh, conflict Pleasure, yeah. Uh, take That's entire discography. Absolutely love Take That. I'm a big Westlife fan and anything Disney, so... Oh, jeez, Damon didn't know that. 
Oh, no, I was gonna say, <laughs> what I was gonna say was there's no such thing as a guilty pleasure. And then you said Westlife and just, <laughs> yeah, I went, Man, Disney, on second thought. Disney has some tearjerkers and Westlife just makes you feel good. <laughs> you should feel guilty, I'm not gonna lie. They were my Westlife first concert. They would make me both feel terribly bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're just not comfortable with the masculinity. <laughs> that's not. That's not bring. That's not bring gender that's, and masculinity that's not into this. Let's open up that kind of word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turned up to get shut down a day. We washed up to see it float away. But nobody's here to stay. I think we all do. I actually don't sing in the shower, and I know he Isn't does. Isn't that mad? Oh, you, oh with me and all of this together. He, he knows does I sing do. in the shower, but I don't. I'm a very silent shower. <laughs> um, that is an unappreciated aspect of my life. <laughs> my you barely hear the water, let alone him. Yeah, just dead silence, but I'm clean. <laughs> I love singing in the shower. It depends whatever's in my head before going in, really. Do you like, really I'm... belt it out? Or do you just oh, I give it socks. Oh, really? oh, I try and hit harmonies in the shower It's as like well. he has a microphone in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's similar. Similar situation. Yeah. yeah. Literally, I, I, I can try. And, I can hear when Owen's on a meeting, and you know, when we're in our day jobs and stuff. So I try and be a bit respectful to that. But if I hear nothing from getting to the top of the stairs to walking into the bathroom, if I hear nothing, your whole team is about to hear me sing a bit of like Shania Twain or whatever is just in my head at the time. Like so. But yeah, absolutely love singing in the shower. I've not singed in any room. Sorry. <laughs> sing. He doesn't, he doesn't sing. <laughs> the one time I open my mouth, I fucking do that. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> Actually, you could have just said no. <laughs> I was thinking that I'd answer for so long. <laughs> I don't sing in the shower. <laughs> See, look how easy that was, Badger. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think, like, I mean, obviously the fact, like, from a consumer point of view, it's great that people can stream music so easily, and that's great. But in terms of there being any money in music, there, there isn't any anymore. So, whereas 20 years ago, I think a band of our size or our style of music could have reasonably hoped to get signed to like a deal and make a bit of money. That just doesn't exist anymore. Um, the flip side of that is is that it's easier to promote yourselves now, obviously like with social media and things like that, but I think overall it's kind of made music a little less important. People don't value it as much. So yeah, I think overall a net negative would be my view on it. Anyway. Yeah, I'd agree there. I think it's taken the occasion a bit out of music as well, whereas like now the second a new album drops from your favorite band like i can listen to it that second listen to any song off it whereas before you'd be you waiting for it to come out yeah. uh in the shops you get your mom or whatever obviously <laughs> we're younger to like drive you to the shop and buy it and it was a big thing and you could only listen to it like in the car yeah, or exactly. like in the car radio yeah. whereas now like wherever you like you have your phone it's just less a little bit less important yeah a little bit less of a spectacle um so maybe it puts the emphasis back on live music which would be great for us but um, I don't know if it does that either, to be honest. So I was talking about this with someone before when I was in college. Um, it seems like, like what you're saying there, like it's almost reversed. Like back, well before, like it was so easily streamed, yeah. you would put so much emphasis on making a body of work, like a physical copy of a, a CD, an EP, LP, and that's how you'd get people to come to the gigs and be like, listen to my band, come listen to us, we're really, really, really good. Whereas now it's completely reversed. It's like you have to come see us live and you see how good we are. By the way, please stream our stuff and come back and tell your friends. It's that easily as accessible. Yeah, the, the recorded stuff you know is I mean? like an afterthought on. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. Like, and the frustrating part of it is it's still as expensive to record an album or an EP as it's ever been. So it's like you have to spend that much, that much of investment in it but you're not making it back through people buying it anymore. Yeah. So, it, you know, it skewed things, yeah, as Owen like, said, like towards live music being more important and that's good. But I, I do think the fact that recorded music isn't as serious as it once was is kind of a, kind of a sad I, thing. I do think, I think the negatives do outweigh the positives. But also... <laughs> yeah! Man. I was going to say, you, you're, made, you made some really good points, counter guys. Argument you made some now. really good points, guys. <laughs> yeah, my counter-argument is shit now. But uh, <laughs> I think because it's, it is so accessible, there's definitely bands that I've found that if the internet wasn't there, I would never, ever hear of them. That's ever. a good point. That's true too. Um, there's some really interesting genres of music as well that everyone has been intro introduced to. Like, it, even a stupid app like TikTok, like the amount of people that 
are being discovered through that, who are talented. Now, there's a lot of people who aren't talented that are also getting famous off it as well, but I do think the accessibility thing is a good thing as well. Um, but, yeah, the, neg no, that's the negatives do outweigh it. You made some very good points. Now that you say that, I got a spot notification on Spotify today, the amount of artists that I had listened to in 2021, it was like two or three hundred different ones. I think, though, you said it before as well, though, that with how music is now, you don't really listen to albums. You more so just listen to singles. Like, yeah, you know, even if you go to your like songs on Spotify, it might be like a different artist every single way. Exactly, yeah. It's not like you're listening to like a band and you're listening for ages. You're listening to multiple at the one time, which I do think is... It comes with pros and cons. Like. Yeah, exactly, because it would be nice to find out more from the artist, but then there's so much available to you that you just want to keep changing it up as well. I think Arctic Monkeys in like the three arena would be like... That would be immense. That would be... I could die happy after that, I think, if that happened. Um, so yeah. I so, think Fontaine's as well. Yeah, because we did go to see them as a band. Fontaine's DC, and uh, we're all very smitten with ourselves after it. They're very, uh, very good. We really got into their latest album, Skin Deep, yeah. Um I think an indoor as well, an indoor yeah. gig. Olympia yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, Olympia, us, Wonder Horse, Fontaine's. That'd be unbelievable. Absolutely. Triple bill, man. Whoever, That's what it whoever, should have been. Yeah. Whoever signed fucking Fontaine's or Wonder Horse, man, listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> we are begging you. <laughs> Yeah, I would really like to play in the Ivy Gardens as well. I really Beautiful venue. Really like yeah, I was going to say that as well, Ivy Gardens as well, yeah. just because we saw them there as well. It'd be cool, yeah. like full circle. But the Olympia is definitely my favourite. Oh, that's, okay. that's a really hard question. Um, I'll be with that yeah, I don't. I don't think I could beat any of those answers to be honest. Um, yeah, most of the bands I like are dead, so never you play with them. Oh yeah, yeah. It would have been nice. To, well, I was going to say the Sex Pistols, but it would have been spat on and kicked at uh, prior to opening up for them. But, uh, I don't think we'd do too well in front of a Sex Pistols crowd. Baby. Baby. <laughs> We're coming to the end of the year now. We've got a really busy month um, at the moment. Um, we had a photo shoot yesterday for our releases that are coming next year. We had a gig on Friday. Got two more gigs within the end, uh, kind of middle of the month. And then we're shooting our first ever music video at the end of the month in the commercial in Limerick. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. Um, based around our song Local Hyrola that's coming out next year. And um, yeah, it's going to be that's the, that's the big thing, is everything that we're doing now is kind of geared towards the new EP that will be coming out in January, February. So all going well, 2023 will be hitting the ground running, so there'll be a lot, there'll be a lot going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're hoping to do at least one gig in kind of the major cities around Ireland for kind pretty of a quote-unquote tour. <laughs> quote, yeah, tour. Yeah, it's always yeah. the way with us as well. Like we'll we'll try and plan for a tour and it won't work out, so we'll just book like one or two gigs and then we'll get hit with three or four more yeah. around that and it ends yeah. up being a tour anyway. retrospectively. Yeah. Like <laughs> Hopefully still a band. And, yes, hopefully. Uh, hopefully uh, bigger than we are now, I suppose. Just a steady progression, I think. Uh, is the best you can ask for. I'd be nice to say like this time next year we'll be signed or whatever but as long as we're definitely I'd say our progress the last like three or four years like we'll just be getting steadily better um, like I don't think there's any stage we've been so dropped off yeah so we're constantly every time we do something new we're like that was better genuinely than the last time and like we're not big headed about it we're just like we are visibly like doing things better organised better playing better writing better songs so if that can continue you know Happy that's all you can ask for, like so, you know. Yeah. Hopefully, that's how we. I'd, I'd like to see it anyway. Yeah. Bigger shows, more people listening to us. Um, get to record and write more more music that we love playing. Um, basically, yeah, like I said, there, nail on the head. Really, just keep going the way we're going and um, see where it takes us. Hi guys, we are Killam Charlie, and this is our song. I'm not alone.
different Oh, this is going to be pulled up in 20 years' time. <laughs> Lee Singer of Kill and Charlie has been arrested today. Get some Ill Illuminati uh, references in here. <laughs> see that? Fucking Illuminati pyramid there. Yeah. This is the Numilati. <laughs> <laughs>